I'm happy to see you guys. All of you guys. Uh, no, you guys. All right. Somebody trying to come in? I don't know. No, I'm gonna. All right, guys. Um, <clears throat> before you open your Bibles, uh, I know this is pretty fundamental for all of you. What is a Christian? <laughs> Raise your hand. What is a Christian? What is a Christian? Raise your hand. What is a Christian? Nobody knows. So none of you guys are Christian then. So none of you guys are Christian. Okay, what is a Christian? A Christian is someone who believes and trusts in God, that he's the Savior and Jesus died for us. Okay. Now, um, shorter than that, follower of Christ, right? Because if you guys all followed me, you would be called Me Memonites or Memitonites. Mem you know? Yeah, Memonites. I like that. And we all go to Memoscando. Yeah. You know? But, like, look, okay? You guys, if you're a Christian, you are a follower of Jesus, right? Of Christ. Because, you know, hence the name Christian. Meaning, you do what? If you're a follower of Christ, if you follow Christ, you do what he says. Right? Pretty simple, right? Then now, of course, a lot of us, we don't do that. We don't do all the stuff that Jesus tells us to do. We get tempted to do other things. We get angry. We get, you know, we do all these things that don't end up following what Jesus wants us to do. Okay? Now, um, open up your Bibles to James 119. <coughs> I'm going to open it up on mine, too. <laughs> I'm getting to it. Yeah. While you guys open up there, I'm going to. Uh, one. Uh, it's right up there. James 119. That's just where we're going to start. Now, when you guys have it, whoever has a blue Bible, can you say what page it's on? 672, page 672, you guys. <laughs> All right, look, before, I just, now you guys have it open. Before that, though, there's a verse, and you guys don't open it. It's Jeremiah 29, 11. I've said it so many times this year by alone. It's, for I know the plans, this is God, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Uh, I went to uh, Stephanie's uh, graduation, and one of the graduates' verse was that, you know. Uh, it, it shows, obviously, that God has a plan for each and every one of you guys, okay? If you follow him, his plan is yours. And the plan, that kind of plan you want, because obviously it's going to uh, prosper you, not harm you, give you hope, give you future blessings. Good things, right? None of that was negative, right? It even said, it's not only, it didn't even say the stuff that it was going to give you, but it said the stuff it wasn't going to do to you. It said, you're going to prosper, you're going to have hope, you're going to have a future, and it's not going to harm you. So not only did it say good things that you're going to get this, but just to make sure you know, it's not going to hurt you in order for you to get prosperous and stuff like that. You're going to be safe, you know? So um, knowing that, if you knew that and you're like, okay, hey, that's what I want, then you got to act a certain way and that's what we're gonna read in James 1 okay now I'm gonna read it James 1 verse 19 where are the first two words my dear. okay my dear brothers and sisters take note of this everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce righteousness that God desires therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen. Look, listen to this. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Okay, um, I like that a lot. That 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 was almost funny, you know, because it's so ridiculous that you someone says, you know, hey, I follow Jesus, you know, I'm a Christian, you know, but then you don't act that way, 
right? You don't act that way. It's almost as if, like it says there, oh, if you were to go in the mirror in the morning, look at yourself, check yourself out, you're, you're good, and then turn away, walk away, and they're like, oh, wait, how did I look again? It was that, it's so, it's that dumb that it's exactly like somebody that says they're Christian and they're, they're not living the life of a Christian. Like I told you guys a while ago, there's a lot of, if we knocked on all the doors here in Lenox or in Los Angeles, you would have a majority of them, you know, probably over 50%, over 60, 70, 80, probably more that say that they are Christian, okay? That they're Christian or there's some type of Christian, like a, a de de denomination, like Pentecostal, uh, you know, uh, Foursquare, Baptist, all that. They all consider themselves Christian. But like uh, I told you guys, not all of them are walking the walk in the way that they're supposed to, okay? Now, bringing up, what are, uh, yeah. Okay, um, this um, verse, verse 21, what are the first two words? Verse 21. Verse 21, you guys, come on. Okay, therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, okay? It says, get rid of all the moral filth, okay? If you want to be a, a follower of Christ, okay? It says to get rid of all what? Moral filth. Filth. Okay, what is that? And it says that's so prevalent in all of us. What is moral filth? What do you guys think it is? Morality means what? Like right and wrong, right? Right and wrong. But filth meaning obviously the wrong side, right? The bad stuff. What do you guys think in our lives what we consider moral filth? Lust. Lust. Oh, man, I was a <laughs> Caleb, man. Lust. What is lust? Like, wanting something. Yeah. What? Wanting something you can't have, but what if I really want an Xbox One and I can't afford it and I want to go steal it? Am I like lusting over the Xbox? No. That's something that Danny's like, oh, man, that's sexy Xbox. Man. No, no. Look, it, it pertains more. It pertains more to. It, it pertains to. Okay, not more, but uh, lusting after like a woman. Or, or a man if you're a woman, you know, sexually, sexually immoral, thinking those kind of thoughts that you shouldn't be thinking because you're not married, you know, that's lusting, okay, that is considered moral filth, okay, stuff that's opposite of God, okay, now, not only that, but something a little less than lust, um, but it, it's still pretty much bad, what are some things that have to do with the opposite sex in what we do every day that is considered probably moral filth or something against God in, in regards to man and woman, girl and boy. Adultery. Adultery, yeah, yeah but no, that's not what I want to get to. Um, like wanting someone who's with somebody else? Yeah, yeah, not what I'm looking for, but. Sorry, Wait, what was the question? <laughs> you, can, you can want somebody to be your boyfriend or girlfriend. You can do that, but what? would make something like that wrong. I'm giving you more of a hint of what I'm looking for, okay? I couldn't want to, let's say me and Michelle aren't going out, right? I want to go out with Michelle. It's fine to want to go out with Michelle if what? She's, She's Christian. Christian, right? Oh. Uh, thank you. But um, if she's not, would that fall under moral field? Yeah. No. Yes. Yes, I mean. The thought of it, not so much, but... Is it right to go looking for somebody that doesn't know God? No. No, right? I, I've, I've gone over this too many times. I know I sound like a broken record, but I say it because I see it. I'm not going to stop preaching on stuff. if I mean, this stuff is going to happen forever because there's, the world is every day around us, okay? Every person, you know, and I, do, I dealt with it. Even though Michelle is technically my first girlfriend ever, which I'm blessed, you know, because I married my first girlfriend. But, oh, man, you better believe this is moral filth, even the thought of it and going out and seeing the world and seeing um, the girls out there that I had to choose from, whatever, and you're thinking about going and starting a relationship with that person, just the thought of it, you're opening the door to what the enemy has to plant in your head and plant in your life. And that kind of plant, that's a thorn bush. That's, that's the devil wanting to get into your life, you know? 
And I'm not going to go through the rest, but you know what that can lead to? A life that's really not one you want. Because that, since it categorizes this, you know longer are going to get what it said in Jeremiah 20, 29, 11. He's not going to be able to open the doors for you. He's not going to be able to. You're not in God's plan anymore. You know, not saying I don't want to confuse you guys. OK, not saying that God can't work in that relationship still. OK, he can work into that relationship. He can make something. He can make a miracle happen. God is a miracle worker. But if you blatantly say knowing, hey, this girl is not Christian. I consider myself a Christian, but I'm going to do this anyway. Then you're kind of like putting like testing guys like, hey, I'm gonna go. Am, am I still saved? Am I still, you know what? That's not how you should test God. God, uh, Jesus was on the mountaintop. Remember, I showed you that video where Jesus and the devil were on the mountaintop, and then the devil was trying to say, hey, Jesus, turn these uh, rocks into bread or throw yourself over God. Will and he said you shouldn't put God to the test in that way. Okay, in the Bible it says test the word because it's proof, but testing him in that way to kind of just let you sin you're using your forgiveness and your salvation like a license hey it's okay i'm saved let me let me go ahead and still do what i want to do that's not how it works now why do you guys think why do you guys think why do you guys think a lot of youth okay adults is a whole nother bargain why do you guys think youth still even knowing that knowing that it's not that's not what god asks of us to look for in a person if they don't know god then you know what you shouldn't go out with them why do you think we still do that why do you think we still go out no it's okay that's i picked this one i picked lorena you're not a christian okay i'm gonna pick i'm gonna pick lorena she's gonna be my girlfriend she doesn't know god <laughs> it's okay. I'll use somebody else. But let's say yeah, you're scared. Yeah, me. man. No, I know. But like, what what makes us want that skill? What makes us want that? Because even though you know it's wrong, you do it anyway. Okay. Maybe it's not a question I want an answer to, but it's more of a rhetorical question. Why? Okay. Me and Brian were talking the other day. Okay. Not this one. No, this one. But. There's a lot of stuff in our lives that, um, you know, we know we should be doing for God and to please God, but we don't do it for whatever reason. Now, the question comes up, how many of you guys want to know God more? Raise your hand. Okay. So pretty much all of you guys want to get closer to him, right? You guys all want to get to know him more, have a relationship with him. Now. Stephanie, why did you raise your hand? Why do you want to get closer to him? Why do you want to get closer to him? Because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Okay. Well, uh, uh, the value. Why do you? You raise, you raise your hand. You do want to know God more. Why? Uh, um, because I don't know, he like took us away from our sins, so you want to accept him in your life so you can go to heaven. Okay. So you can go to heaven. Okay, Kayla, why do you want to be closer to God? I'm really asking. Because I know that Mark, he like following Jesus, but I want to get closer. So. But why? Why do you want to get closer? Yeah, I'm not finished. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I, I know if I get even closer, like, the doors open a lot more. There's a lot more stuff. Like I get blessed. You get, you get blessed. So, okay. To go to heaven, to get blessed, you know. Um, <laughs> Also, because um, I think because he's our father, and we want to get to know our father. He created us with yeah, children, right. and he, he made us sacrificed himself. himself for us. So, like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> just for the sake of him being awesome, <laughs> cool. yeah. you know, for him being him, just for no, the yeah. sake of him being who he is. That is God. Okay? Those are all great reasons, right? Now. If we want to get closer to him because we know of all these good reasons, there's no negative reasons why we want to get closer to him. All of them are good. Now, if we want to, what are some steps we can do to show that, yes, we are going to get closer to God? Bear good fruit. Bear good fruit. Oh, that was a good one, yeah. Bear good fruit. What, what does that mean, though? Brian, what does that mean, bear good fruit? <laughs> I'll let you explain. Oh, okay. Thank you. Good. All right, cool. Well, the actions you do, okay, the people you hang around with, the words you say. And even I was watching, I like watching people's court on my bricks just to see the people and the law and everything. 
And a lot of a lot of times she says, you know, hey, how dare you? This 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 um to a plaintiff and a defendant, and they got a recording. I'm saying, hey, you Emma Effa and the word and this and that. And then she's like, why did you say that? She's like, oh no, I, I was angry, but that's not that's what not what I meant. No, 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 yes it is, yes it is. It's like I was angry. I don't know why I said that. No, you you know what? Because you live with that every day. Because that's what's in your heart. Because if that came out of your mouth, that means you live with that every day in your heart because of what you said. So not only just saying cuss words, but what you say out of anger, what you say about other people, that shows what's in here. And if what's in here is not Jesus, love, which is love, and all the good things that he says to do, then you know what? Maybe you got to check yourself. Check yourself. If you're really getting closer to God or farther away, okay? Now, what are some other things? Bearing good fruit, yes. But what are some things, more concrete things that will get you closer in a relationship to God? What are some things we do we can do every day? Loving others. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. How do you talk to him? How do you talk to him? Praying, right? How many of you guys pray every single day? Every single day. Be honest. You know, it it doesn't matter if you lie to me. It's it's God. God knows. Okay. Now, what were you gonna say? What would that? Read it, right? Read it. What was I talking about the last few weeks? There's two sides of us. There's a what side? Flesh. Flesh. I gave it away. <laughs> flesh side and a what? Spirit. Spirit, right? Now, the flesh side, in order for it to stay alive, what do we have to do to it? Feed it. Feed it. How many times a day? Six. Wait, how many times a month? <laughs> how many times a month do we need to feed our body in order to keep it alive? Every day. Once a day, twice a day, three times. At least once a day. Because if you don't eat, you could die. Now, how is that different from our spirit? What do we need to do to our spirit to keep it alive? Feed it, right? How do we feed it? We don't feed it food. We feed it the Bible. Okay? The Word of God, right? Now, if you skip a day, your spirit, my Gil Danny taught this to us one, one time, I think, uh, uh, when we had a retreat once. If you don't read your Bible, even for one day, you're risking your spirit not dying, but getting farther away from God. You know, you're not going to be able to be energized in God. You're not going to be able to get closer to God. You know, there's no, I mean, just like when we eat, if we, if we don't eat after a while, like I'm extremely hungry right now because I'm on a diet that Brian put me on. I, I feel really weak right now, but actually, no, I don't because God's good, you know. I drink a lot of water, you know, but let me wait for them to sit down. What? <laughs> yeah, oh, no, I put myself on it. <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing good. I'm doing good. This is day number one, you guys. So um <laughs> not my wife, Brian, you know. But uh no listen, listen. Look, read your Bible, right? Okay. Now what are you gonna learn from the Bible? How is that gonna get you closer to God? How to bear good fruit, yeah. In in general, it's gonna teach us how to do a lot of stuff, right? What do you call something that teaches a lot of stuff? Or how to do things, right? Okay. What do you a guide, yeah? What's another one for like a guide? It's like today I opened up a toy for Genesis and I had to put it together. The what instructions. Instructions. The instructions, the right? It it takes you, yeah, the user manual. <laughs> the user manual. <laughs> it tells you instructions how to build something, right? The Bible is our instructions of how to live what? Life, right? How to live life the way that he intended us to live, right? So that we can become prosperous, live happy, peaceful lives. Now, if I'm putting together the toy and I'm like, I ignore the instructions and I say, no, 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 I know a better way to put it together. I'm going to put it like this. And then what's going to happen? It's not going to come out the way it's supposed to, right? It's going to miss pieces. It's not going to be able to stand up the way it should be. It was a dollhouse. Uh, it was like right away, Michelle didn't even read the instructions. She just put the first thing together. And guess what? The very first thing, the second thing, she couldn't put it together. I had to get my like knife out and try to open it inside whatever and then not the same thing with God can undo things you know it's not going to erase us from our history but he can make it happen so that things get corrected if later on in the road you 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 find yourself hey I'm so far away God I want to get back on track and he can do that but you know what you risk you risk the time of what could have happened the time you were lost without God you could have a shortened life you guys if you guys go and you damage your body with cigarettes and drugs and and sex before marriage, not knowing who that person slept with before, you can end your life way earlier than God had intended to because you didn't follow his instructions. 
Like so many times I tell you guys that the Bible is not a book full of things that are gonna make you miserable because that's what it's about. No. Like, oh no, I don't wanna I don't wanna follow the Bible because it tells me to do all this stuff and it's gonna that's bad. No, you guys know all the things in the Bible that it says for you to do, they're good stuff. It's good. It's good for you. It's it's gonna bring you happiness, peace, everything you would ever want and need. But why don't we do it? Get the cuesta, man. <laughs> like I like I always say, just do it. You know? Um open up to Exodus chapter three. Now, a lot of times, it's up there if you guys don't know what I said, okay? Um, Exodus chapter 3, verse 10. Now, in regards to relationships, especially when you go out and you're looking for somebody, okay, and you find somebody uh, 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 that doesn't know God, okay? Give me a second. Give me a second. I'll let you guys look for it. Don't worry. Take your time. Okay. All right. All um, right. No, I, I lost my train of thought. Anyway. Wait, one uh, question. Yeah. Okay. Um, what happens if, like, they do know that there is a God, but they just, like, don't go to church? Like, they, they know who he is and stuff like that, but, like, they don't. Um, the devil, the demons, they all know God. They all do. Are they saved? No. They're in hell. So no, somebody like, can know God, but not go and practice <laughs> it. And, you know. But go ahead. Oh, that's it. That was it. That was it. No, right. no, you come in. Let me finish it. Uh, no, 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 there was more. I'm kidding. I'm no. kidding. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Um, yeah. I just want to add the point that like church doesn't save you. You know, like we don't go to church so we can go to heaven. We go to church because the Bible says we just need to exist in community. Not only that, but going to church, I mean, <clears throat> can get you closer to God. It, at church, you learn about what? Reading your Bible, about praying, about communion and fellowship, about his love. If you don't want to come to church, it's going to be really hard for you to, 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 to get that, you know? Church itself isn't, but this building is nothing without the people that are in it and what is being taught in it. The instructions are, are here more than anywhere else, okay? So, anyway, Exodus 3.10. I'm going to read it. This is the story of Moses. Okay. Now, Moses gets confronted. Really quick background. Moses goes out into the desert, right? And he sees a burning bush. Okay. And that's God, right? And God's about to tell him, hey, give him instructions, right? Now, the, the bush was burning, but not burning up. It stayed lit. Okay. If you guys remember the story. Now, God is about to speak to Moses. He says, hey, I've seen the, the prayers, the cries of the people that are in slavery, my children in Egypt. And I'm gonna I'm I'm here to respond to their prayers to give them an answer. And this is what he says. Verse 10. What are the first two words? Okay. So now go, he's saying it to Moses. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign that you uh, sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent you to me. And then God also said all this stuff. Now, two or three times in there, okay? God, okay? God. Moses knows this is God. M Moses knows because it's it, it even says earlier in the chapter that he, you know, he had to take off his sandals because it was holy ground and all that stuff. He knew it was God talking to him. And then when God, imagine, God comes down and he appears to you, hey, I heard so and so in the Middle East, they need help. I'm going to send you in and I'm going to be with you. And you're going to tell them, hey, stop doing what you're doing. Let my people go or whatever. What would your reaction be? Mine's right away. All right, God, let's go. You said you're going to be with me? Oh, I was going to myself, no, you're going to be with Let's go. Let's go, man. Let's go throw down, God. No. What was Moses' response? He was questioning him. It's like, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. He said, he said um, it says, but Moses said, 
who, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? And then God says, well, I'll be with you. And then he goes, but, but what if they say, ask me, who sent me? You know, like, well, me, duh. You know, he was saying it. It's like, Moses, you know what? Get the out. Just do it. It's God. You, you know what I understand? That's God. So <laughs> God did that with such a big situation in Egypt. The people were enslaved, okay? You guys cannot say nearly enough that you guys are going through the physical torture that people were going through back then, okay? You guys are in a luxury penthouse today compared to back then. And yet the things that God asks us to do are nowhere near as big as what he asked Moses to do, okay? And yet we still have a problem doing what God told us or asked of us to do. Follow what He his instructions say to do. If he's saying you to do it a certain way, why even question it? Why even hesitate? Just do it. If he said, if, if reading your Bible gets you closer to God, then do it. Even if it's like, I, I say like, look, I've been wanting to, uh, like, I had a couple people, okay, that want to, you know, learn about God, right? They want to read a Bible, you know, pick up. Now, this is what you got to ask yourself, okay? If uh, they started flaking out, uh, I had one over there in my at my job. They were like, um, "Okay, let's do it." And, and you guys don't know this, but we were gonna try to start like me and Matthew. We were gonna try and start Bible studies, and then um, and Michelle did it first before anybody. And she would try to start scheduling these Bible studies, and then uh, the person wouldn't read. The person just wouldn't read, you know. And then uh, every time they would, Michelle saw them get together and, and, and get ready for a Bible study, they would have been like one chapter read when they were supposed to read seven, one chapter a day, one chapter a day. Some chapters are a paragraph, okay? And yet they still couldn't do that. And yet this person wants to get, these people actually wanted to get closer to God, but they weren't reading the Bible for the Bible study. And that gives me the question, this is in regards to anything, not just Bible studies, but going out with people, how you treat your body, all this stuff, what comes out of your mouth. This is my question. To you. Okay, you want to get closer to God? Okay, they say yes. All you guys said yes. Okay, I don't think anybody said no. Then prove it. Do it. You're not doing it? The way you're living your life is not that way? Then do you really want to get closer to God? Like really, it's a simple question, but really think about it. Ask yourself, do I want to get closer to God then? I'm not doing this. I'm not doing the stuff that even just reading the, I'm not doing it. I have the time, you know, you guys are on Facebook so much, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever, you're at home. When, and, and you can't say, but I'm busy. I'm doing homework or what this and that. You know, you know. And, and you know when the time comes and it's dead, like me, a lot of times I'm pretty sure for you guys, when it's dead at work and there's no customers. You guys have the time right there. You have the internet right there. You don't need to whip out your Bible. You got the internet right there, even on the Bible app on your phone. Where hey, I can use this time instead of keep browsing for nothing and going on Facebook. <laughs> maybe not even five minutes. Let me just read. Just let me just read. And if, but you guys, are, nah, I don't want. I don't want oh, to do it. That, that's exactly how I almost. Because you know why? Because I acted that way. And you're just like, oh, I don't. It why why not you know you know what it says there it's gonna make you happy it's gonna show you the instructions why do we not do do those things it's because we're so that you guys hadn't answered yet but we're so entangled in the world already we're so deep in what is not god everything that is not god we're, we've grown a relationship to since we're we have, we're not around God all the time the way we should be reading the Bible and everything, then we're gonna be doing what the world's doing. And if we're doing what the world's doing, it's gonna be really hard to change gears to what God wants us to do. Okay? So when you're looking for somebody and and, and they don't know God, how that how how the heck is that gonna help you get closer to God? They don't know God. Okay? They don't know God. How especially I don't I never like using this especially. But I'm, I'm saying, look, especially for both, but especially for women, because, look, it hurts because I'm a, I'm a guy. In the Bible says we're supposed to be the head of the household. We're supposed to be the ones to lead our house to God, to Jesus. We're supposed to be the one 
saying, hey, let's pray at night with our wife, you know? Hey, let's do this. That's a big responsibility. Now, for women, this is why I say especially for women, for women, if you look towards a guy that doesn't even know God, how how is he going to lead you to what God wants for you? It's not going to happen. You guys, it's not going to happen. You're not going to squeeze water out of a rock. You're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. Okay? So when you're doing that, you're putting yourself in a very dangerous spot. Okay? Not only that, but the opposite way. I say especially girls, but guys too. Because when you look for a girl that doesn't know God, you're risking a lot of stuff because they she doesn't believe in all the moral rights that you believe in. Believe it or not, guys, we I mean, of course, we're going to feel really hurt sometimes, really struggling with stuff. And if we don't have that woman in our lives that loves and can care for us and say, you know what, let's 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 open the book honey let's 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 open the bible let's pray sometimes michelle has to pray for us because i just feel so frustrated you know so either way it's 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 a must you guys now you guys know you guys know right and wrong just do it just do it you know i don't want to feel like i'm just hate you know what i say because i know a lot of you guys okay and a lot of you guys not even here are doing the exact on purpose opposite you guys know, you guys know, and you, what you're doing is wrong. When you guys curse, you know you should not curse. Don't do it. Now, I understand if you're struggling, you, you let it go on, but no, struggling means, again, what do I always say? Struggling means what? No, str struggling means that you are trying. trying, you're fighting back. If you're not fighting back, that's not a struggle. If you're letting it go, that's not. If you're going out, all right, um, you wanna be my boyfriend, you wanna be my girlfriend? And oh, you're not, that's not fighting back, okay? That's not, that's not. I'm sorry, you know God loves you. You know God loves you. Okay, you guys, this is one of those um, lessons where it wasn't so much, guys, it's only 840. Anyway, those are one of those lessons. So don't be a Moses, okay? Where he keeps questioning God. He kept, but, but what did, but what, it's, hey, hey, don't worry. Another problem is I'm God, okay? You remember? Check it, I'm God. Listen, I have plans for you. Unlike anybody else, I got you. And do you not believe him? Now, sometimes ask yourself too, if you're not following what God says and you say you really want to, do you really believe in him? Because if you really genuinely believed in God and what he says, then, and you know that's for sure, for sure, hey, if I follow what this guy says, my life's going to be changed. If you really believe that, then you guys would really, really change. Okay, you would start doing, hey, what the Bible says. But sometimes the, the question is not so much um, that um, you're doing what the world is doing because you're so entangled in it, but it's because you don't believe that he exists. And you guys, I, I pray that none of you guys are in that boat, okay? Because he does exist. You don't want to wait to the day you die to find out that he existed. And you found out because you didn't go where you wanted to, okay? That's huge, okay? We're doing this out of love here, out of to teach Okay, so that you guys know, so you guys have a better life. So that you guys, I would love to see all of you guys grow up and like you guys all married, have kids, have little genesis and, you know, of your own, you know, and it's really good, you know, it makes you look good. I'm smiling. You, you, I see all you guys smiling, you know, that's good. That's, that's really good. Imagine you have it yourself. I mean, like, I'm doing a dress. I mean, those, those fools are married, you know, <laughs> those are married, man. They get to take part in everything that God had for them because they're married, you know? They don't have to worry anymore about, you know, who am I going to say? They have each other now, and that's God right there, you know? And thank goodness, they uh, I, we've seen them before they were even married. And I, I, I can only guess who's next, you know? <laughs> no, but that's it's beautiful, you guys. It's beautiful. What God has for you guys is absolutely beautiful beyond your comprehension, you guys. I'm not saying this to pick on you guys. I'm telling you because it's it's so true. God, God loves you. Okay, I can't say that enough. You guys know He has good stuff in store for you. I see some of you guys. Uh, I saw Hoven one one time, like a few months ago, after a, a lesson similar to this one, they went off and they started doing it, man. They just started. But remember, it's not temporary. You don't want to go like my diet right now. I don't want it to be a diet where like, okay, in a few days, I'll oh, forget it. I'm going to go eat up again. No, no. I'm serious. You guys, you guys, I took four pictures and everything. I'm going to do it. 
You know why? Because that's just do it. Okay? Get the quest out, just your life. Okay? I wanna be alive for my daughter to be have kids and everything, man. I wanna be there for my wife. I wanna be able to play with my grandkids. I wanna be able to not be in, you guys don't know my mom. You see my mom. My mom's in a wheelchair. She used to walk before. Okay, she has trouble reading. She used to sing so beautifully. Like I can't even remember how she used to sing. It's been so long. But because she started not doing what God wanted her to do, you know, I want to be able to keep. You guys know my feet aren't. I have messed up feet. I want to be able to walk for my whole life. Okay, that's my motivation. Okay, well it's only eight forty-five. All right. So, um, do you have any prayer requests? Um, well, not for me, but like just to keep praying for my sister.